Hello, and welcome back to This Month on the Railroad, my monthly train news series. Of course, this episode is to wrap up the month of August, but first off, let's start with a few stories from late July that I missed. On July 29th, Florida's Tri-Rail said goodbye to their three remaining F40PHL-2 locomotives, which were retired in 2015. Units number 802, 803, and 805 were sold to Diesel Motive Incorporated, likely to be scrapped, with all three units being taken out of Florida by CSX. On the same day, the second Via Rail Siemens transit departed the factory in Florin, California, and the official classification for the locomotive was revealed to be SCV-42. While the previous units were wrongly classified as SC44s and later SC42s, it seems that SCV-42, with the V denoting Via Rail, is now the official locomotive classification. So now, into August. On the 1st, the Long Island Railroad reactivated previously retired M3 rail cars, supplementing the M9s which aren't being delivered fast enough. Much to the surprise of everyone, these 37-year-old EMUs are reliable as ever, still providing Long Islanders with dependable transportation. In the same region, on the same day, ground was broken on the $1.8 billion Portal Bridge replacement project in Kearney, New Jersey. The current bridge was built in 1910, and as such an old piece of infrastructure, it's far past its prime. Construction on the replacement bridge will be completed in 2026. Finally on the 1st, $275 million in funding was secured for Massachusetts East-West Rail connecting Boston and Pittsfield. Later in the month, Amtrak's American View inspection car was seen on the back of the Lakeshore Limited with Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker inspecting the future route for East-West Rail. The next day, a bright blue SD-70 was spotted in Waycross, Georgia, numbered PRLX 3907. This eye-catching engine is the first SD-70 MACH locomotive for Chicago's Metra, and over the course of the next month, it slowly made its way to the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado. In the next few months, 3907 will be tested, and sometime in 2023, the first SD-70 MACH will enter service on Metra. It'll be pretty weird to see six axle units pulling Metra trains, but I suppose it won't be the first time that this has happened. The next day, Progress Rail revealed some renderings of their Jewel Series battery electric locomotives on Instagram. The SD-70J and SD-40J are two new zero-emissions locomotives offered by the manufacturer, and while these renderings have apparently been floating around for quite some time, this was the first time many rail fans got a good look at them. A few days later, on the 7th, Coaster F40PH number 2103 was moved to the Pacific Southwest Railway Museum in Campo, California. Since Campo is essentially disconnected from the National Rail Network right now, 2103 was put on a trailer and trucked 60 miles over Interstate 8. The next day, another image surfaced of CRRC's rail manufacturing plant in which we can now see the front of the new SEPTA cars on order. Once again, the first cars should arrive in Philadelphia in the next few months. Speaking of railroads receiving new CRRC cars, Montreal's EXO began to retire their 30-year-old single-level coaches. While no official date was given for a final run of these cars, the agency announced that beginning on the 11th, all 24 cars and cab cars would be slowly phased out of service. The next day, New Jersey Transit released yet another special unit, this time being an ALP46 wrapped in a Ride With Pride wrap. While this unit was made with good intentions, it is a bit unfortunate that they got the colors of the rainbow in the wrong order. I do think it looks pretty unique, but in my opinion, Chicago CTA did it better. Anyways, the day after that, Hundreds, if not thousands of rail fans flocked to Pennsylvania to see the Reading and Northern's Iron Horse Ramble excursion with their two steam locomotives double heading. I was actually lucky enough to be in the area when this was running, and I have to say, it was a great experience despite the town of Jim Thorpe being completely mobbed by rail fans. With 2102 leading and 425 trailing, it was certainly a sight to behold, and definitely not one you see every day, as this was the first steam doubleheader on the RNN since 1988. Later in the week, on the 17th, Chicago's Metra announced that they'd found a manufacturer willing to overhaul up to six F40 diesel locomotives to run off battery electric power. Once again, the chosen manufacturer is Progress Rail, who already has experience overhauling a handful of Metra's locomotives. This time around, as many as six will be rebuilt onto Progress Rail's Jewel platform which I mentioned earlier. The first locomotive will be completed in 2026, with it entering service shortly thereafter. The next day, on the 18th, Amtrak's new ALC-42 Charger locomotives made their debut on the California Zephyr, making it the third route to receive these new engines. The first engine to operate on the Zephyr was 309, and although it was trailing, 
reports state that it was indeed providing power for the train. On the same day, California High Speed Rail's environmental study was approved for their line between San Francisco and San Jose, meaning that as of right now, 420 of the 500 miles have been approved for construction. Great news for California High Speed Rail, which seems to be cruising along quite smoothly as of late. Switching to quite possibly the opposite of smooth, the next day the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority's Orange Line was shut down for an entire month to complete five years worth of deferred maintenance. This sent the city of Boston into a state of chaos, with shuttle buses creating even more congestion and commuters scrambling to get to work on time. This shutdown was called as a result of a recent fire in the Orange Line, in which the Federal Transit Administration threatened a federal takeover if things got any worse. This shutdown seems to be a last ditch effort from the state of Massachusetts to retain control of the T. A few days later, on a system that's almost as mismanaged as the MBTA, Philadelphia's SEPTA expanded the Elwyn Media Line one town west to the community of Wawa. On the same day, Norfolk and Western 611 was fired up in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, following its recent inspection. Here's a picture I got of it in the shops there earlier this month. Just a few days behind the Orange Line shutdown in Boston, the new Green Line Union Square branch was also shut down. Due to a rushed opening of the line, some track issues were found, and now they have to be fixed. In hopes of avoiding this a second time, the Medford branch of the Green Line extension was also delayed once again into November, allowing for proper testing to be conducted before the grand opening. Once again, things aren't looking so good in terms of transit in Boston right now, but hopefully this bleak state of affairs will finally convince local politicians to start investing more in transit. The next day, once again following a story in the Boston area, an X Pan Am-8 was repainted by CSX following their recent merger. Ironically, this X Pan Am locomotive was previously owned by CSX, meaning that this may be the first locomotive ever to be owned by CSX twice. The day after that, following their introduction on the California Zephyr, a quartet of new long-distance charger locomotives led the train with no older P42s to help. Providing power were 301 and 309, but trailing dead in tow were 313 and 314, both of which were being delivered to Amtrak shops in Delaware. Finally, on the 25th, Florida's Broward County funded a $15.5 million study on a potential commuter rail line between Fort Lauderdale and Aventura. These two rapidly growing cities are currently connected by Brightline, but potentially in the future, another commuter rail could fill in the gaps on Brightline's schedule. Anyways, that's August, quite a busy month. Between the MBTA basically reaching rock bottom and rail fans completely taking over the Reading and Northern, it'll certainly be one for the books. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon in another video.